State Representative Frank Foster with us here in our American Metal Roof studio. You can find them at AmericanMetalRoofs.com and find out how you can save up to 50% on your energy bills. He is the freshman from Pelston and a Republican. Good morning and thanks for being here. Hey, good morning, sir. Happy to do it. Looks like you're getting a little sun. Uh, yeah, well, where we are you doing that? Out in the uh, <laughs> out in the yard. Okay. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was raining a little bit uh, up north this weekend, but... Uh, yeah, spring fix up and clean up and Enough all that time sort of to stuff. Do some yard work, right? How about this little story here? The presidential campaign war chest of Mitt Romney is swelling. They had a call-in fundraising effort yesterday. One-day fundraiser brought in more than ten million dollars in one day. In one day for oh Mitt Romney, gosh. just well, by uh, call-in. Isn't that something? Do they have a final number on that? I know they keep talking about how much he he has in the bank, but they had eight hundred people. Uh, who were at the Las Vegas Convention Center who called potential Romney donors and raised all that in one day. Well, he has been ca campaigning for the better part of a decade, so I'm sure he's got yeah. some connections around the country. But I, it, it's like we talked about um, on a few shows earlier. Uh, Mitt Romney at the top of the ticket, I think, helps a lot of Michigan Republicans, uh, in including myself, just because he's going to bring out uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the Michiganders. Yeah, the loyalists who uh, sure, remember. Sure, remember George and... Uh, Governor Romney. So, uh, you know, it, but is that the right choice for the country? It well, I don't know. To be he, seen. he won the Michigan primary here, if I'm not mistaken, last time he around, did. and yeah, uh, you did. can see why. I guess it would be sort of considered his home state, yeah. really, even though he was the governor of Massachusetts. Sure. And you know, with Huckabee out, that helps his chances. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. And Trump and, out. And Trump out. <laughs> that helps <laughs> everyone's <laughs> chances. <laughs> We're not talking about Trump anymore. Right? Boy, the worst kept surprise ever yesterday, and, and, well, and he did uh, it at the NBC meetings. In fact. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think many people are surprised, but uh, you know, they do a lot for ratings. He says, I love business more, and I and then he was careful to say, I think I could have won, though. Yeah, I think he likes the attention. <laughs> I really do. He thrives off of it. But we just talked with uh, State Representative Wayne Schmidt about, apparently, we got some extra money in the coffers yes, here in Michigan, as we understand. Where did that come from, and what are we going to do with We've it? We've got some in the general fund. We've got some in the school aid fund projecting. Uh, you know, I think the House and the Senate have uh, different priorities. Uh, it is a, it's a lot of money, but when you take a look at uh, our deficits, our retirement system, it's not that much money. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a commitment uh, I know the House has made moving forward is we want to we want to create a pool of best practices uh, for those uh, uh, school districts that are properly paying down in their retirement. And I think that remains the focus. Uh, I think it's just a, a difference in, um, in in budgeting, really. I think over the past uh, a few years, uh, they've they've taken a very generous uh, revenue estimate, uh, not conservative, uh, and they've put that in the budget, and then they've had to cut schools twice. And so I think what we do is we, we give the school the cut initially, mm -hmm. and we take a conservative estimate, and then when it comes we have a surplus like we did yesterday, then we can take that pool and incentivize good behavior. So the per pupil amount won't be adjusted based on this extra revenue? I, you know, the Senate might uh, want to take a look at that. I think the House, uh, we're still uh, steadfast at 3.5%. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, it, it, again, that, that's up to the appropriations people when it goes to conference. Uh, I hope that uh, we, we make the cut and we move forward with it. Uh, these, uh, these revenues, uh, uh, I hope, will continue to gain. Uh, I was taking a look at uh, the news this morning. It looks like the school aid fund actually is going to decrease over the next couple of years, so we need to prepare for that as well. Uh, school districts can prepare for these uh, cuts and pre prepare for the less revenue in the school aid fund by creating those best practices and uh, and you know, looking forward, not just year to year like we've been doing. So it's the carrot, not the stick. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so, and that's the that's the way we're going to force the conversation. You know, keep in mind, a lot of these school districts knew that this was coming, and a lot of them did plan and have, have you know, s saved up their uh, reserves and fund balances uh, for for years like this and for years like next year. Uh, but there's been a lot that said, just give us the, the IRA money and we'll make the adjustments. Just give it to us all up front. And so it, it's kind of, it's disheartening when they come back to the table this year and say, well, we're out of money. Mm -hmm. yeah, they just didn't do the planning. But that's, I mean, that's a lot of small businesses and in localities that uh, resources are thin. But uh, you know, in northern Michigan, I don't know if Wayne alluded to this earlier, you know, a lot of our school districts are doing 80-20. Uh, I was at schools yesterday touring uh, yeah. and reading to kindergartners, and they already are paying the 80-20, and they're not getting the base rates of fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 So I think we need to keep that in mind that uh, we don't throw the good out with the bad. Well, that's politics, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I asked Wayne Schmidt not to simplify it, but we got this extra money. Are we going to spend it or are we going to save it? He says a little of both. Yeah, I think so. I, we'll, we'll pay down on, on the retirement, uh, uh, the, the public employee's retirement, 
uh, and then hopefully we can you know create a, a rainy day fund because it's been raining a lot in the last decade yeah, here. <laughs> it sure has, and in the last couple of weeks, too. Thank you very much for being with us this hey, morning. Thank you, sir. Sure, appreciate it. What are you off to today? Uh, let's see. We've got uh, a couple breakfasts, and then I've got my committee that I uh, chair the Natural Resources, Tourism, Outdoor Recreation. We'll be talking about PILT payments, which everyone's probably very interested in. What does that mean? <laughs> Payment in lieu of taxes. Oh. State owns a lot of land, and it pays half the taxes on a lot of it, so we need to give some of the revenue back to locals. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's nice. Sure. Terrific. <laughs> Wayne Schmidt was explaining to us about how, you know, some of this extra money comes from the gas taxes and that the prices are so high sure, yeah, that the, sales, the yeah. state collects more money. And he says it's kind of a, a shell game because on one hand, we like the extra revenue. On the other hand, we don't want people not traveling. That's right. Because well, the it's gas coming up at a crucial high. point where I, I think rising gas costs are just going to kind of suffocate the economy, especially for northern Michigan. We need people, um, you know, seeing the ads coming to Pure Michigan, even uh, even downstaters coming uh, up north, enjoying those campgrounds that we're going to keep open uh, and parks and things like that. And and gas really and it it puts a strain on that as well as industry. So uh, open up some of the reserves, uh, like President Bush did, uh, explore some of the drilling or hint at exploring uh, more drilling, and I think you'll see those gas prices. Is drop. He did hint a little bit the other day, I thought, but it's interesting. It's like uh, stop people from smoking, revenue goes down on cigarette taxes. <laughs> Gas prices go up, we make more money, less people drive. There's gray area everywhere. Sure, and I guess it's probably how how you look at it. Uh, although uh, in the immediate with the tourism season coming up, I want those gas prices dropped uh, in any way we can. Yeah, who do you think, and I only got a couple of seconds sure. left, but who's surfacing as a reasonable Republican candidate to run against Debbie Stabenow for U.S. Senate? Well, we did hear about uh, you know, Congressman uh, McCotter. I, I had hoped Pete Hookstra would take a, uh, a stronger look at it. Uh, I can't remember the gentleman that came up to northern Michigan that's that's uh, running against her, but there's there'll be a, I think there'll be a crowded field you do? Uh, here in the next couple months, and then it'll, it'll narrow down quickly. McCotter's a good candidate. We'll see. I thought he said he's out. Didn't he say Did that? Did he say that this morning? I thought he said that. Maybe he said he's in. I'll have to look at Whoever again. it is, they should be able to raise a significant amount of money. You think so? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think really? uh, Senator Stabenow's got uh, quite a war chest. Yeah, so that's quite <laughs> a poker game. They're going to need that money for sure. Thank you very much, Wayne. Uh, Frank Foster, state representative, Republican from Pelston. You're on your way this Thank morning. Thank you, sir.